Hello, hello, Formula Armour Plate. I wasn't going to make this a video, but um, I've had an absolute blunder in qualifying by uh, losing the back end and going off track on lap one, and then foolishly running out of fuel on lap two. So um, I'm starting P12 as car two. So I sense there's going to be a lot of action as I've got to make my way through the field. Um, top five would be nice, but there looks like some very quick times in this lobby. Uh, 4 to 4 8 is my personal best in quality, so even that would have put me to 5th or 6th. So it could even be a top 8 challenge, but we'll see how far we can go. <laughs> see if we can survive number 1. But... 30 minutes, the track temp is 26. Yeah. Let's the see what we can do. 19 Celsius. Okay, Blake, let's get this right. No fuck ups. Green go. flag, green flag. Usual good start with the Audi. Oh, I'm very good at getting this thing off the line. Right. On your right side. He's still there. Still there. Just need this hind eye to get moving. He's still there, keep digging. Still there. Keep it steady, still there. Don't really still want to there. be on the right inside here. Alright, clear right. Clear on the right. That's alright, we weren't really trying to attack him, we were trying to slot him behind largely. Brock, sorry. We looked P9, that's promising. I don't really want to be on the outside of this guy up here. I'm going to play this guy careful. There's my uh, timeouts in the gravel to my colleague. See him trying to cover that rather late in the day. We're going to be patient. It's a half hour race. Don't need to force our way through. We'll be making any enemies. The Audi's got some good straight line speed as usual. Is he going to go ultra to defensive? Mm, go around. He's on your left side. He's left the door open still now. There. He's still there. Clear left, good job. You're on the left. P8. A little worried about steaming into the Hyundai, but. Oh, we have gone wide though. Go away with that. Another one, up four, P8. I mean, most of them were done into turn one, so that's almost the first genuine over there. Tyre's still getting up to temperature, so can't over attack a lot of these corners. Definitely feel I've got the edge on the car ahead. After that, it's going to be slim pickings, as I thought. He was going to go for a dive behind. P5 is Carl. I was in a race with him yesterday. Um, we were we were laughing so similarly for the probably a good 20 minutes of the race, and then he he seemed to have a little wobble. Um, for a few laps which allowed the car behind him to get up to him and eventually pass the him. Just done a 144. But I know his pace was so similar to mine, so it may be P6 as a maximum. But we'll see. I'm assuming it's going to be an easy stroll up to P6 anyway. Car ahead seems to have upped his pace a little now. Maybe it's just getting up to temperature with the tyres.
trying to run the brakes a bit more towards the rear. That is meant to be a little wedgy going. Take that one. I'll say I pressured him off. <laughs> yeah, trying to run the brake lights a little more rearwards. Try and get a bit more rotation on the brakes. And the general advice in these things is run the brakes as far rearwards as you can before it gets, starts getting undrivable and unpredictable. Let's get hunting after Macau. Seventh position. Alright then, this is still only going to be a 1 minute 45, we really need to be doing some consistent 44s. Quick, quick guys can lap in the 43s. Fastest lap for Hendrickson, 144.37. Figueredo is closing the gap, it's now 0.7. Just to say that P2 does indeed pump in at 43. The car behind is um, actually is blowing for blow. Perhaps a little annoyed that I was able to get the run on him into turn one at the start of the second lap. I think if I really knuckle down I can edge out that gap. Car ahead start to get a little isolated, not picking up the draft of the car ahead anymore. Very last minute to jump into this race, actually. Um, pick. Okay, Blake, you're reeling Bath in the gaps now. Managed nice to get a win in the fixed series on Wednesday night, and then um, did one race yesterday in the open and won that, so I almost feel like I've not got much more to achieve around here, but I wasn't sure if the IndyCar fix was going to go live this early on. Um, not favourable time for Americans to pad out the lobby, so. Might do that a little later on. Squeeze one more of these in. Good safety rating gains if you can keep it clean. The leader has just done a 144.08. High rating looks like it's going to take a hit, but uh, we've got some good gains on that. We were due to lose sort of 120 based on where we were starting the race. So You've just done a 144.64. That's your quickest lap. Sector 1 is 0 0.33 off the pace. I think I have time to find around here on the last lap. It was too low, but I did drive off the Car behind it. Car ahead at best lap of 45.2, so there's a definite pace difference. Do we go brave and ballsy? He's going to cover it, so we're not going to go too risky yet. In the first third of the race. I feel like there could be a chance down here. Try the old switcheroo here. Power on left side. Keep it together, hold your line. Hold your line, you're clear on the left side. Come on Blake, good stuff, keep it coming. It's a semi cover the inside there, it's not a... Keep your concentration, a make the bastard work for it. Run. Didn't want to give him an open door to just charge one up the inside, it'd be very difficult to slow it down. We're risking contact. Let's see if we can get away now. We should be distracted by an old figure ready later behind him. Make sure we get a good run through here so we're not vulnerable into turn one. I think we've done. He will get the slipstream but at a four tenth of a second the gap. Has just done a I'm not going to go defensive just yet. If he starts to get the mega run, maybe he's going to lay down for us. <laughs> we covered it, but no, I think we're okay. Made up a lot of time on the brakes. Sixth place. Your last lap time was at 145.40. Some sort of crash behind for about P11. 
we're going to worry ourselves about. Got a knuckle down now, P6, up 6, down 33 R rating. Just going to struggle to make much more progress, but I prioritise on gapping the cars behind. Seeing if we can edge up to cars ahead. We really need cars ahead. You're gaining on this guy, the gap's now 2.8. Said, I mean, been in a race with Carl yesterday, I know his pace is good. He can pump in consistent mid 44s, which matched me. I did go as cleanly as a 44 1 yesterday. Full of track temps, I think. Yeah. Alright, Blake, double chances here. Let's make sure we can take them. That's 20 minutes to go. Get the downer up, see what we're all due for. Best lap so far is 44 6. Again, rather clunky on the curve. Put a bit of time back on the egg, oh, then it's all gone. <laughs> Figueredo was able Figueredo to get straight through the cow. Kind of matched our personal best. Let's see what kind of time Cal's doing. The 44 8 lap prior, 44 9 that time. Uh, that is marginally slower than what we're doing. Sectors 2 and 3 are 0.43 off the pace. You're a tenth off the pace in sector 1. Still with a gap of already 3 seconds, it's going to take more than a quarter of a second of that. Should be an 18 lap race. Marginal, but I'm okay on fuel. Could have been a little cleaner through that corner. A couple of cracks at getting that turned in. Horrible corner this one, I never feel quick. Fine line between taking it with a wide entrance and taking it tight and really making sure you're focusing on the apex. Something in between, but it's uh, such a fine line. If they say we by probably another three or four tenths on Carl this lap. PB for us. No damage. Four Carl four five. New bar flat for you. That's your best lap in the session. Forty five two from Carl. It was actually seven tenths. I won't get too used to him lapping at that pace. Figueredo's clinging on just about, a little slower than me, but not by much. Oh, we clipped the grass. It's going to be one position, if not two. Pay attention to track limits, please, Blake. Don't really fancy being behind McCall again. He's just about backed it off. Ah, uh, silly. Conscious that I'd said uh, I wasn't happy with how I'd taken that corner the previous lap. Just trying to take a bit wide on entrance. You're reeling. So I'm really in the gap the apex. is 1.6. Got uh, a bit greedy. Took the grass back end went. Uh, it's going to be difficult to get back past Fabio now. Very similarly paced, marginally quicker, I think I was, but you only really get one overtaking opportunity around here, and it's turn one. It's going to be some effort now to get five seconds back on Carl in Don't be intimidated. Ten Keep him behind you. Just 
try as best we can. P7. Certainly want that P6 back. The gap to Bath behind is now 0.9. Good first sector. Much, much better. Carl did do another 45 too. I know I shouldn't really be focusing on what he's doing when there's another car in between us now. It's still nice to know that we need to go through this year. We're halfway home. Fuel is tight. You might need to save some fuel to That's get to the That's good mid-corner and pushed out a bit on the exit. Now we've got a bit greedy getting on the throttle. Nice and patient through there. Let it roll through the left hand largely. And then don't be afraid to scrub the speed off on the entrance to this a bit more than you think. Bounce back in style in terms of lap time, 44-1, get a bit of slipstream to help. How does that relate? 44-5 for the car ahead. 44-7 for Carl. Figueroa ahead is now 1.1. Yeah, drop Macau behind again. He ca yeah, he cannot do 44s. Not ideal through here. Get a bit of time back on the exit. Not massively down overall. Blake, you've got half your fuel left. I don't really want to catch the car ahead too quickly. I'm hoping I can kind of encourage him up towards the car. Perhaps wishful thinking, but I haven't quite ruled that out yet. Not with the pace we're showing. We're about a quarter of a second down on this lap. I just run a little wide on the exit, as I said before, but pull back a couple of attempts there. Still going to be a point three. That lap time was 144.28. Smidge and a half second quicker than. Um, Carl again. Try to be a bit cleaner through here, but early on the break. Tight uh, speed on the exit. Carl's on for a PB this lap. I think he's up to his post, I'm expecting to see him around a 44, 44, 45, he's in the best of the sector. That's the kind of pace which will preserve his fifth place. You only need really to do one or two of them. Time running out for a seven lap foot line. Uh, a little wide okay, again. Mike. Comp going to compromise our exit. Seven. 
Yeah, looking at the pace of the front three, doing 43s, it's definitely out of my reach. Not the setup I've currently got anyway. John, 44-0, yeah, Sector two's two -tenths off out of reach. So it probably even, even if I hadn't blundered the qualifying, I think the five would have been the extent of my abilities. 44.6 for Carl, it was a PB, maybe not quite as quick as I thought it might have been. You've got 10 minutes left, 10 minutes to go. It's enough of a step up that I'm not closing my half second, I think. Coupled with the fact that I'm now right up behind Fabia. Very wide there. Not really an over the track. Try and unsettle them a bit. See if I can get make another move into turn one. He has been, he has been fairly solid for this section of the circuit though. I'll get a nice slip stream, it's not going to be enough this lap to make a move. See if he goes defensive. Probably doesn't feel the need to. Could have maybe thrown it up there. Oh, he's gone deep there. He might not be driving. He's still there. Clear left side. Wouldn't really want to go side by side through this section, you just end up slowing a pair of us down. Okay, Blake, stay close, wait for him to make a mistake. He's making the errors, which is bode, bodes well for a move. V7. Exactly what Carl needs there. Quite a lot there. I think getting a bit out of position through these corners, perhaps. Last three laps, I might have hung one up the inside. Not yet. It's still a reasonably close battle for the lead, actually. Less than something that hard. A little slow on the exit there. See how much we've cost ourselves being in the dirty air and not being able to take optimal lines. Eight tenths down on our best. Blake, you've got 10 minutes of fuel remaining. Lucky to avoid an off track. Giving him a bit of breathing space. I'm sure fourth would work. I think I'd just be hitting the ref limiter if I tried going down to fourth there. Carl is coming back to us, 
not enough for uh, any consideration of a move that could be within two seconds at the end of the God, race. Enforce that mistake. So I think just reinforced it if it wasn't for my error I probably would have been P5. Instead it could be P7. We've got four laps to go, we're not giving up. Was a 144.54. Strong on the brakes. Okay, like five minutes to go, five minutes left. That's my best for figure eight there, that last lap. I could do my run there really, it's been far too risky to try and squeeze a nose up when it's the most straight. It's a bit, a bit kinked, it's a bit windy. He's getting out of position through here though, he's going to be defending when he doesn't need to be defending. He's actually encouraging danger with some of this. He did legitimately defend that last one pretty well but out like the order, it didn't need to. Four and four. Let's see if he can hold on. Whether he's got he's gonna have to send it, mate. Three laps to go at the line. Carl is just two seconds ahead. Whether, whether Fabio is going to be maybe having his eyes lighted up ahead or is he going to be too distracted from behind? Well, another good turn one. Another 45 for Carl. So, he's sufficiently clear that he should be safe, but he's just giving himself almost needless pressure for the last couple of laps. You may be comfortable, but as soon as you start having cars in your rear view, you can start getting a little rattled. Right on the limit of the grass there. I was almost expecting a replica of the incident. The yellow's ahead, but I think it was just a back marker that's slowing up the leaders. The chorus of thank yous in the chat. Carl may well scupper this, he may be giving it to me now, in fact, yeah, let's get screwed. Not that I've had a clear look, but if there was any chink of a gap difference in pace, if he starts getting sucked along by Carl's slipstream, that kind of kills off any chance I have to make a move into turn one. Five minutes of fuel remaining, five minutes. Credit to Fabio, pumps in a personal best that lap. 44.3, his fastest of the race. He's certainly a lot more comfortable than he was a couple of laps ago. Yeah, I tried docking down to fourth that time, it's probably a bit late through the corner to be doing it, but. Didn't really see much of a benefit. You 
got about two laps of fuel left. Assume everyone is fueled correctly. We just possibly be too out of fuel. This is a lighter fuel usage than last week at Donington. You see, most people just run a generic 38, 40 litres. We're running on fumes, mate. That was a 144.33. Get out of shape. You're not helping himself. The worst part of the circuit to have a look. I'm going to leave the door open on the outside. Right, on your right. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Still there. Right to oh, the left. Say move. What? Say move. I did not see that coming. Let's not immediately throw it away, but wow, that'd be one to look back at. You do not make moves around there very often. He was obviously extremely uh, respectful there. The group is telling me don't do it, but last lap for a bit of entertainment. Very little fuel left. In a lot of Two situations I'd have just got a car in my side pushing up into the gravel. Was he perhaps a bit too respectful? Good read, bad. Watch it back. A surprise P6 in the end. We'd almost settled for P7. We were pushing and pushing. It didn't look like it was going to happen. He just got himself a bit out of shape through the first sector and gave me the run. B6, All okay, right. it's over. It well flag. done, mate, good finish. Good job, very good job. Good driving there, Fabio. How close was it? I want to say the track temp at 27.2 was perhaps lower in the race yesterday. <sighs> wow, we yeah, what was that last lap then? Let's have a look. So yeah, what did he had a little back end wiggle through there, but that wasn't there wasn't much wrong with that. He's still got a big gap, and then he just seems to be, be a lot tighter for the bank corner. Didn't he get another wobble? He just really runs what oh, he gets a bit of a slide there, runs it wide, and doesn't pull it back up the track. And then he's going sort of against the camber a bit, so I'd have to run. The ideal, I mean, if in a dream situation, he'd be more central, and I'd actually go around the right hand side. It's actually hindsight. The gap was there, but because he hugs the right hand side here, I just think he's not going to open up, and it is going the wrong way around. And winds around. I was kind of settled to sit behind, and last minute I thought, I'll give it a go. I think he's going to be really respectful. Drift up a bit. I leave a good, I leave a, a reasonable space. I could have played it safer. And then here, yeah, I was worried there that the be a bit of contact, but he just didn't have the angle I had. That scrub a bit more speed off. And so I think full credit to Fabio. Great driving. That was really, really respectful. He could easily have really fought that. Pushed it wide, drifted, drifted wide here. Because he's gone, he's all, he's the car ahead until really midpoint around the corner. And I'll get a bit of a better exit. And I've got the run. Don't quite get a car's width, length, rather, ahead to cover it. And I've got the better line through the kink. And then I'm just coming through here thinking, is he going to die from the side? He just seems to be a little too far back. 
and yeah, given how we've taken the first two corners, I, I wasn't really expecting anything outrageous. Break it, turn, accelerate, break it, turn, accelerate, make it go straight. Oh, that brake bias. So that was what I was talking about with the brake bias. So I was running it low, lower than I normally do. Um, I think the fix setup runs the brake bias at seventy eight percent. Um, this kind of it's not a specific paid for setup. It was just in the TCR forums. It's like an improved baseline that one of the drivers did. Just to make it something easy to pick up, it's not track dependent, it's literally just the baseline as it's called. And it is a year old. Uh, that runs it at 69% brake bias, I think. But yeah, some people go really, really aggressive um, on the brake bias. So, as I say, you know, hard on the brakes, the back end will kick out a bit. Uh, so, they're getting the turn in and rotation, it's just hang having control of it, you're able to still hold the wheel. Yeah. What we got? 50 to 53 percent. He's on about the Civic there, not the Audi. Um, Hyundai 37 to 40. Was that? Are they really different? God, that must be. Um, yep. So, what's the other thing we can watch? Our mistake. So this is when we'd got into P6, we, th we were trying to hunt down Chris at this point. And we were, we were kind of anything between three to three tenths to half a second quicker. And that would have been enough to get up to him. I mean, we, what did we end up? We're not that far off him anyway. 1.7, including going side by side with Fabio. Yeah, just... We've got we've taken this a bit too tight the lap before. We just get on the grass and the back end goes around. And then in these cars it's kind of just dump the throttle, front wheel drive, and the front will start coming around, but stop me spinning entirely, but it just pushes me out to the gravel. Thankfully, I mean I was worried we were gonna lose two positions actually, because the run that the car behind had, if he was cheeky, he could have covered the inside. I kind of give it a little wiggle to the inside without properly covering it, just to scare him enough uh, that he thinks, actually, I'm going to fully commit and he's going to crash into me. Um, so we watch that in from his car. Should be able to get a gauge for the speed difference. Such a run, such a run. But the inside's open. He just kind of hesitates. It's crucial. There's if I'd lost a lap or two, that might have made the difference. Scary for him in cockpit. It really just reinforced it. I mean, if I'm being honest, I probably would have gambled. If I was him, I probably would have gone to the inside there. So, fair play that he didn't. Um, yeah, let's watch our start, and then we'll quickly flick through incidents. I don't remember there being a huge amount of incidents. A couple of issues behind. Uh, but there wasn't much sort of shouting on the comms or anything. So. Yeah, we have a good knack of getting this thing off the line. I think it is an Audi trait. It's also uh, a new trait. I mean, there's an Audi on my left hand side. But so yeah. so the Audi, we've got the Honda on the inside. And then we've got another Hyundai on the inside. Trying to stick with this guy on the outside, and then we want the outside for turn four up here. So, as soon as there's a gap, I want to. Uh, so, I could have actually come up earlier. I know at the time I was thinking, I knew he was on my inside there, there wasn't the gap, so naturally I couldn't fill that gap, so I tried to go tight. I wasn't trying to overtake that car ahead, and then I just wanted to slot him straight behind. So is that Figueroa ahead, isn't it? Figueroa DL. So we're behind him. Oh, so we make the move on him into turn one, don't we? 
I remember how this panned out now, yeah. So we have a bit of kind of side by side, kind of half having a look at him, half focused on behind. Never gonna have a look at the chicane, not especially not from this far back. Just kind of show my nose out there just to unsettle him. Uh, but my priority was to get a really clean final corner, get in his slipstream, and then was he going to cover the inside? Surprisingly, he didn't. I suppose he was trying to himself get the slipstream off the car ahead. Ultimately, the run we had was better. Got the move done. Ran a little wide on the exit of turn one, but thankfully didn't lose enough speed. And I want to say the car ahead just throws it in the gravel up at the fast right-hander. Um, I don't think I was behind him for very long. That must be the next lap. Again, we're kind of trying to see if we can just close up through this fiddly. I really don't enjoy this middle section. I, I like Zambor. I just find this section so fiddly. No matter what car I'm in, like a high downforce Formula car, Indy car, or a TCR, just so fiddly. Yeah, we've got a decent run, but we're not close enough. I think, we, I think the gap at the time was four tenths. I remember saying we're not going to be close enough. I mean, I did get a good gain on him. No, it wasn't this time. Ignore me. <laughs> I was thinking this was the one where we could have had a look, but it might have been when we were um, getting back past Figueroa. So I think it's this lap. I think he just gets a little wiggle on in the break, and then he just sort of disappears, stage left. A little bit of pressure from me. Yeah, he just... He do he just... Doesn't, look, doesn't actually look like he wiggles. Just kind of doesn't really, doesn't get it turned in and then catches the grass. Lose two positions, is that it? Anyone else coming by? No, he's got it covered. Uh, right. Okay, incidents. Nice and quick because there shouldn't be many. Who's this? Sebastian Rosenhan. That's a big dive up the inside. Oh, are you ever going to turn? Blimey. He's an innocent victim there. He's led him through, but I, well, I say he's led him through. I think, to be fair, he's down with his own car. Yeah, because he's parked it up. I think I heard a bang. And contact, <laughs> not just the uh, car contact bang. Let's have a listen. That's normally the engine's gone sound. And looking at the zero revs on his counter, yeah, he's managed to blow his engine doing that. Oh, wow, blow his engine, smash his engine. Surprising, I mean, it's, it's a reckless move. He was never making the corner, but not. I suppose in theory, what they're trying to say, maybe the suspension would pushed in and smashed into the engine. Don't know. But yeah, stupid move. This guy's just going off by himself, is he gonna keep out the barriers? Oh not on the other side. Oh he's bounced across the track, thankfully he was running last. That's another engine that's gone kaput. This is the guy that's limping back with damage, you see the sparks under the car. Oh <laughs> still shedding bits and pieces. Was he gonna make the corner? Yes. You really Let's take it, it's just the front right that's gone. Where's the front right? Yeah. Is he fighting the steering a lot? Uh, not too bad. We still do. Oh, so we didn't pair, but you don't get a fast repair. So it's just stupid constantly shedding bits and pieces. driving it well enough. Yeah, and that was it. Did he finish the race? He did, just a lap down. But his lap times. His lap times, to be fair, barely changed. When was the incident? He's, he's got sparks there. I presume this was the incident, the 232. Yeah, he's been in the pits after the incident. Uh, so he's really repaired required. He was doing 46s before the incident, and even though it looks like his car was a state, he was still doing 46s, so.
Oh, the end. Uh, I think we already know we were losing about 45 I rating. Uh, safety rating should be good though. 12 on the safety rating because we only got the 1x. 34 we lost on the I rating. It's not too bad. Still 4250. I'm really surprised. I honestly thought I was going to go backwards um, on the I rating. I think I've said in the previous video I was expecting it to sort of drift back towards a 3.5. I did dip into the 3.9s. Um, I think last week, my first couple of races at Donington, I was seemed to be a magnet for horrendous luck. Horrendous luck slash idiotic drivers. Um, I'll let you <laughs> decide which one. Uh, but then I had a good run at Donington. And uh, yeah, Zambor, that's my worst result. Um, one of my most entertaining races. And I'll definitely take it from starting P12. Uh, yeah, looking at my best time, 44-1, as, as I said, mid-race. I've never hit a 43, so all of that was out of range, uh, and I'm, I could tell. So, bro, Carl seemed to be off the pace today. He was quicker yesterday. So, P5 was on offer there, which I think would about 20, 20 I rating loss, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, given we'd have only got one place better in a perfect situation, I will 100% take that. Reasonably clean across the board. Um, from what I've seen so far this week, races of Zambor have been really, really good. Um, long may it continue. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be back on the podium in the next race we do. Until next time, bye-bye.